When you think of the old man in the sea, most people think of Ernest Hemingway's epic tale of an old weather-worn fisherman in a little boat fighting a titan of a blue marlin. But there's a much more ancient story in Greek mythology about an old man in the sea, and his name was Nereus. This classic rebuilt 1969 fed ship is named after that mythical god of the sea. The story of this Nereus began in 2014, brought down to her steel hull, completely redesigned, re-engineered, and repowered with the most advanced systems you would find on a new fed ship. Nereus provides the best of both worlds, the lineage and the classic lines of a Dutch-built fed ship with the technology of the future. All it took to bring this classic back to glory was a little bit of time and a whole lot of money. All right, so we're here on Nereus, anchored off Fort Lauderdale Beach. We've got the zero speed stabilizers working fantastic. The boat's not rolling from port to starboard. This doubles as a sun deck as well as a boat deck. You'd put your toys up here. Me personally, I think a classic fed ship deserves classic toys. You know, an old Montauk Boston Whaler or maybe a small sailing catch would look spectacular up here. You know, you could put a rib up here, 16 feet, maybe a little larger. When you clear this off and put all the tenders in the water, it's a great entertaining spot. You can set up some more tables, some more chairs. You know, when you start looking forward here on the deck, You've got your mast with the dueling satellite domes. You've got high-speed internet, high-speed TV. You've got your radar there. We're up here at the upper helm. You've got your very comfortable captain's chairs made by Stid. Your co-pilot chair. Plenty of seating for all your guests while you're underway or at anchor like we are right now. We've also got complete control over this vessel from this location on the boat where everything that you can do down below at the lower helm, you can do up here with two SIMRAD screens. Basically tells you everything you could possibly need to know about this boat while you're underway. When it comes to accessing the bridge area, there's two ways to get here. One is through this custom built hatch designed specifically for Nereus or the port aft side stairwell. We're going to head back there on our way to the cockpit. One of the things that makes a great boat is the use of dynamic spaces. This boat has two. One is the formal dining room, which we'll show you later. The other is this cockpit. The only thing that would make a vintage Rolls Royce better is if it was a pickup truck. And that's what this cockpit accomplishes for Nereus. It's a great spot for the crew to put lines and fenders and gear. It also provides an egress down to the swim platform. Just three steps up, entering this pentagraph door, here is the sunroom. This is what it's all about. Sunset, looking over the coast. You better believe at the end of the day today, on our way back into Port Everglades, this is where I'm gonna be cracking open a beer. This is where anyone out on the water would wanna end their day with the beautiful view in this climate controlled room. Some timeless features that never grow old are beautiful teak decks, high gloss varnish teak tables and cabinetry. Uh, you've also got an ice maker here and storage. You know, we've got this huge dinette along the aft. I mean, you could fit a whole family out here for full meal or card games or, you know, just relaxing and reading a book. So heading down the port side of the vessel, uh, you've got the stairwell leading up to the bridge and the, uh, the upper deck. You've got your salon windows, fire suppression hoses here engine room egress, helm access, and then this leads up to the bow. Now we're up here on the proud bow of Nereus. Beautiful settee here. Forward of that is classic fed ship of this era. We call it the doghouse. It acts not only as a secondary bosun's locker, it's also an emergency escape hatch for the crew area. So beautiful piece of wood, lovely, definitely classic fed ship. Forward of that is the windlass, dual windlasses. Very well polished, I might add. Here's the control module for the dual windlasses. And no proper ship would be complete without a ship's bell. This is actually a hand grab. Um, most people would think that this would get filled with water but there was enough thought put into this boat that there are drainage holes. If it ever rains, this won't be a puddle of water. Up above here, you can see your 
proper ship's horns, and your two navigational spotlights. Leading in from the sunroom, or the Florida room, one of the biggest things you'll notice is the, the teak that travels from the Florida room. In the Florida room, it's a uh, you know, high gloss varnish, you know, easy for wiping down and cleaning up. And here, it's more of a matte teak veneer. Beautiful open windows that let plenty of sunlight in. Custom sconces from Holly Hunt, bronze and onyx. Beautiful leather couches custom made for this salon and a massive entertainment system. Also, all throughout the boat, you have LEDs, uh, not old school halogen lights, and that significantly reduces the heat inside here and helps cool this area a lot better. On the forward bulkhead here is the flat screen salon TV. Below you have all your speakers and your sound system. And uh, hidden away, we have your matrix here of your sound system and Apple TVs, which run the entire boat, which are controlled off launch port control pads all throughout the boat. This audio tower comes in real handy. One, it's easy access and hidden away, so you can replace and fix anything that needs to be repaired. Uh, one of the biggest questions when anyone ever gets on a vessel like this is, you know, how do I watch TV? Uh, this boat not only has satellite TV, it also has uh, wireless internet. And if you did need to repair anything, this whole tower has a track system that pulls out. So you're not squeezing in behind there to do any repairs that you may need to do. Before we go forward and take a look at the helm or the dining room, we're, uh, we're gonna go take a look at the uh, staterooms. Uh, the, the lower level of this vessel is laid out where the staterooms are aft. The cruise quarters are forward and the engine room is in the middle of the boat. Spiral staircase down, kind of a fun little feature is this handrail all the way down is wrapped in this spicy leather orange fabric, which is a fun little touch. So as we enter the, uh, the full beam master stateroom, um, the sheer amount of volume in here is pretty spectacular. I mean, with 22 feet, four inches of beam, you get a full beam master. Everything in here has been custom made. The centerpiece of the master stateroom is obviously the uh, full king size bed. Little lamps on both sides here, beautiful wall sconces. Again, your launch port control pad. Port side of the master stateroom, we've got a little uh, desk here. So if you're working remotely, you can have some privacy away from the rest of the boat if you have a lot of guests. Um, little settee attached to the desk. The starboard side settee is set right next to a full size walk-in closet. As we go into the head here, you've got his and her vanities, both sides with a full size shower, beautiful marble work, uh, and a Toto toilet on each side. If you know anything about toilets, you know that Toto is the Rolls Royce. Wrapping up in the master here, follow me to the uh, forward port side VIP, which has a full queen bed. Wandering around the lower deck, you know, one of the things that you really notice is how quiet it is down here and how each room is very unique in its own personality. You got four and a half reading lights. You basically turn on and off as you push them in and out. USB ports for charging. You got your double hanging lockers here. Directly across from the queen stateroom is this twin stateroom. Very similar amenities as the queen suite and the master. Beautiful woodwork. En suite has just a magnificent balance of beautiful stonework and simplicity. We're gonna pick up where we left off, uh, which is going forward. The first thing you'll notice is the uh, foyer where you have this beautiful teak and holly floor got this access egress, which can take you either forward or aft, you know, forward leading you obviously all the way to the bow. You've got a beautifully decorated day head, the helm, access to the engine room and the cruise quarters, and beyond that is your formal dining room. I want to take an extra minute just to uh, go into one of the cooler parts of the boat, one of my favorite parts of the boat, the helm. We've got your VHF radio. Right here is your AIS. AIS stands for Automatic Identification System, and it's been a great tool for seafarers to identify other vessels and see what their direction is. You've got your hydraulic bow thruster, four SIMRAD screens, 
which are all interchangeable. This one right now has the boning system on it, which is basically your heart of the vessel. You can see how much fuel the boat has, what RPMs the engines are running at. Turn everything on and off. There's several other screens on this vessel that have it. So you don't just have to be at this location. Right here's your rudder angle indicator, which is really great tool, especially when you're docking, because it's really important to know what angle your rudders are at. This screen right here, which isn't on right now, is your NIAD at rest stabilizers. You can also use them at rest. So if you're at anchor, or if you're spending a lot of time offshore, at zero speed, hence the zero speed stabilization, will be stabilized. Above our head here, we have our Delta T engine room ventilation control system, your secondary VHF radio, autopilot, your general lighting. Also, we've got our controls or handles, I should say, for our spotlights, our dual spotlights, port and starboard. Behind the helm, we've got a, a nice couch, you know, for people to keep the captain company. We've got a few chart drawers here. Originally, this boat didn't have an egress up to the bridge from the helm. They added this and I think it's a great feature. So instead of running all the way aft, you now can be up at that helm in 10 seconds. I just want to point out one more feature. You've got, you know, exit and entry doors on the port and the starboard. Next, I'm going to show you the galley and the formal dining room. Just forward of the uh, crew and engine room entrance uh, is the on deck galley. Beautifully done. Viking fridge. You have your uh, convection oven, proper oven, range, extraction hood here, marble countertops, and plenty of storage. So walking into what would be typically the formal dining room, which I hesitate to say, it's more of a multi-purpose room. There have been discussions about possibly turning this room into another stateroom, a proper office, a lot of usable space in here to keep it as a formal dining room or turn it into whatever you want. So now that I've shown you the exterior decks and the interior living spaces, there's only two things left to show you. One is the engine room and two is where the crew calls home. Every proper ship deserves a proper cruise quarters, and it doesn't get better than this. The flare of this fed ship helps produce this extremely large crew area. It's got a full dinette, it has a full galley. Over here on the starboard side, you have the captain's quarters with his own private head and satellite TV. Forward, you have two double bunks, a shower, and their own private head. Uh, as well as an escape hatch in case of any emergencies. So like I mentioned, the, the cruise quarters on Nereus has a full galley, stainless steel appliances, your Viking fridge with double doors, and a washer dryer. This leads into the engine room. So now we find ourselves in the heart of the boat. Right over here, we have our ship's power system where you can control the generators and the shore power. There's a seamless transfer of power that if you were to lose shore power, the generators would automatically start up and keep the boat running on shore power. Here are analog gauges for your Caterpillar 3196s, which a beautiful little touch is they are painted Ferrari red. Port and starboard, you have the generators there twin Phasor 65KW generators. On the starboard side, you have your AC power systems, which gives you the ability to plug into any electrical system in the world. So if you were to ship Nereus over to the Mediterranean, you wouldn't have to do any sort of refit to plug in to utilize the electricity in Europe. Over here, you have your Niad Dynamics hydraulic reservoir. This powers your stabilizers, your thrusters, your windlasses. Forward of that, you have your air conditioning system with four chillers, your raw water pump, and the control panel for your chiller system. One of the things that blew me away the first time I walked onto Nereus was when I walked into this engine room. You would not expect to find an engine room like this on a vessel built in 1969. Standing in this engine room, not knowing what you were on, you would think you were on a brand new 130 foot super yacht. Kind of helps explain the scope of the work and effort that was put into rebuilding the Fed ship Nereus.
Thank you for joining me anchored off Fort Lauderdale Beach on this 105 foot heritage fed ship in all of her glory. If you'd like to experience Nereus for yourself, please reach out to me anytime.